Hi, and welcome to lesson two in our organic chemistry unit. Here in lesson two, we're gonna to start to take the hydrocarbons that we talked about in our introduction and add other types of atoms to them other than hydrogen and carbon. I thought I'd start with this molecule, which you may be somewhat familiar with. Chloroform, which looks like this, is a common chemical that's used particularly in uh, television series and movies when somebody wants to make somebody else pass out. They'll sneak up behind them with a rag soaked in chloroform and put it over their face and the individual will pass out. And if you do breathe uh, enough chloroform, that will certainly happen to you. Chloroform looks a lot like methane from our previous lesson, but as you can see, it's got three chlorine atoms on it instead of hydrogens. It's an example of what we call a substituted hydrocarbon. Let's go and talk about what this is, what it means, and how it works. So it turns out that organic chemistry isn't just hydrocarbons. We can put any other atoms that we want that can interact with carbon into a, an organic molecule. If we take a hydrocarbon and we do this, we have a substituted hydrocarbon, where we start replacing carbons with an atom or even a group of atoms. The term for anything that we put into a molecule that isn't just carbons and hydrogens in the backbone structure is known as a functional group. So here are two examples of substituted hydrocarbons. In our first example, methylpropane, which we met in our last video, we've replaced a hydrogen with a carbon, which is itself bonded to three additional hydrogens. In our second example of 2-chloropropane, we've removed a hydrogen from the second carbon, the one in the middle, and have replaced it with a chlorine. In both cases, we've now put a functional group into the molecule. Our functional group in methylpropane is a CH3 group, and our functional group in 2-chloropropane is a chlorine atom. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have before we move on. You have a reference table that's full of functional groups. It's reference table R, organic functional groups. This has common functional groups, but it certainly does not have all of the functional groups that chemists have discovered that could be added to organic molecules. It's important to understand that every functional group changes the structure and then changes the name of the parent hydrocarbon that it came from. For us, the functional groups on reference table R plus alkyl groups, which we're about to talk about, are the functional groups that you need to be aware of. Of course, you will have this reference table on the Regents exam, so you just need to be aware of them to the point where you can use them, draw them, and name them. Our first functional group are the alkyl groups. The structure of an alkyl group is simply a hydrocarbon group that's been added to a parent hydrocarbon. As a result of that addition, we're going to change the name of the molecule. The alkyl group is going to become a prefix in front of the parent hydrocarbon's name, and we're going to use a number, just like we did with double bonds and triple bonds and alkenes and alkynes, to indicate the carbon that that alkyl group is on. If there's more than one alkyl group in a molecule, each one has to be stated in the name, and each one's location has to be numerically identified. If we have multiples of the same alkyl group, more than one methyl group for instance, we would need to group them together and then indicate that we have more than one by using the covalent prefixes that we talked about in unit eight, not the organic prefixes that we talked about in our last lesson. So if we had two methyl groups, we'd give it a dimethyl. If we had three butyl groups, we'd call it tributyl, and so on. So coming back to this example, which we've seen before, this is methylpropane. And that's because we've removed a hydrogen from the second carbon and have put a methyl group, a one carbon alkyl group, in its place. We don't have to number this here because this is the only possible location where we could put that methyl group. If we put it onto the number one carbon, we would simply make a molecule of butane. If you have any questions about alkyl groups, now would be a good time to write them down before we move on. Our second functional group, and the first one that we find on reference table R, are the halides. The structure is simply a halogen atom. When we add a halogen atom to a hydrocarbon, we do have to change the name. The halide becomes a prefix in front of the parent hydrocarbon's name, and we use a number to indicate the carbon that it's on. If there's more than one, each one is stated and numbered, and multiples of the same are grouped with the same covalent prefixes that we used with our alkyl groups before. So the rules for alkyl groups and halides are very, very similar. It's just that the functional groups themselves are different. Our example halide is 1-chloropropane. The reason it's chloropropane is because we put a chlorine in place of a hydrogen, and the reason it's 1-chloropropane is because we put that chlorine on the number one carbon. If we'd put it on the middle carbon, it would be 2-chloropropane. If you have any questions about halides, you should take a moment and write them down before we talk about some other things. 
There are a couple of different ways to put halides onto hydrocarbons. We're going to focus on two chemical reactions that do that. The addition reactions and the substitution reactions. In an addition reaction, we start with an unsaturated hydrocarbon and we convert it to a saturated hydrocarbon by adding atoms to it, either diatomic hydrogen or in the case of halides, diatomic halogen molecules. Here's one example of an addition reaction. We start with ethene, an unsaturated hydrocarbon, and we're going to add diatomic hydrogen to it. What's going to happen here is that we're going to break that double bond, and each of those lone electrons are then going to bond with each of the hydrogen atoms, making a saturated ethane molecule. Here's what this reaction would look like if we wrote it on the board in class using structural formulas. We can do the exact same thing with halogen molecules. So here you see ethene, and we're adding a chlorine molecule to it to produce 1,2-dichloroethane. In a substitution reaction, we're going to take a halogen and replace a hydrogen on a saturated hydrocarbon. So an alkane is going to be a reactant in the reaction, not a product. Here's an example substitution reaction. Starting with ethane, we're going to add a molecule of chlorine gas to it, and this is going to produce chloroethane as well as a molecule of hydrogen chloride. Here's what this reaction will look like if we wrote it on the board, and you can see a couple of differences between the addition and the substitution reactions. Probably not a bad idea to take a moment and write down the differences that you see before we wrap up, and certainly write down any questions that you have. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of substituted hydrocarbons. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can identify alkyl and halide functional groups. Make sure that you can name substituted hydrocarbons. And make sure that you can identify addition and substitution reactions and determine the products and the reactants. If you can do these things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them in the comments below the video and you can always get in touch with me. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.